So then we had a John Moxley MJF segment at the end of the show. And uh, John Moxley came out, and uh, I could not, in good conscience, say that this was a bad promo by John Moxley. But I, I can say, in he good did, conscience, he, he did. Here, here's the one thing. If, if you're ever, this is the worst John Moxley promo you probably will see. But since well, it's John I, Moxley, it's like even a bad John Moxley promo. This well, guy. Said, here's the thing with Moxley. He, he was second. actually he, he was actually really good, except he stumbled over trying to explain br- the Brian Pillman thing, and he got the day wrong. Well, Aside from that, it was a really good promo. Here's the thing, though. Uh, really, I've good watched act. a million John Moxley promos. Okay, and the strength of a John Moxley promo is when he really understands what's going on, and he uses all of that to cut a great promo. Well, he understood. And in a, in a while ago, there was actually a, a period a while ago where his promos before all of his title matches, he literally would call his shot. He would actually explain w- what was going to happen in the match, and then it happened. If you watched the the promos in the in the matches, this one here, like he, there's a point here where he's trying to explain this storyline, and like he just was. <laughs> He has no idea what's going on. He's like, well, you know, there, there was a guy, and then he disappeared, and then he wanted to play Brian Pillman, and then someone gave him a chip in the lamest finish to a ladder match I ever saw, and now <laughs> yeah. he thinks he's the devil. And yeah. he's just explaining this like he cannot figure out what is going on in the storyline. And if you watch the storyline, and this is not necessarily their fault because of everything that happened with CM Punk, and MGF coming back and getting cheered, and everything that they've had to do because all of that happened. It's like, it is hard to figure out what's going on. I mean, it's it's interesting in the sense that you don't know if MGF is going to go heel at the pay-per-view, or if he's going to go full babyface for a while. You don't know if he's going to win clean, or if someone's going to interfere, or if someone's going to... You don't know any idea what's going on. And well, there's a million different ways you can do it. It's not like it's. I think people kind of believe something's going to happen in a certain way, but I mean, they don't know how they're going to get there. No, no one knows like, what's going. There's on. like, there's like, like I think there's like a I million earlier, ways they, this could go. I, I think people expect MJF to win the title, but there's eight different ways he can win the yes. title. Yes. And that's that's the that's the real question. Or he could lose, but I don't expect that to happen. Um, but you know, it always could. Um, so so he's doing this promo. And the crowd is like, this is not it. They're not going nuts for this promo. No, they're, well, they're the, just the, sitting the, there. The, and... the crowd, the crowd, like was more booing because I think that they they saw uh, MJF as the big baby face. Right. Well, now. they did, but then you know later. Well, first uh, Stokely uh, came out, and the firm uh, hits the ring, and they start and they beating beat up, up Moxley, and then MJF's music hits. And he did not get a giant superstar reaction. Like he got cheered, but there were also some boos. There were some boos, yeah. And he comes. Well, I out. think the crowd. The crowd. You know, number one, it was late in the show, and this was a bad crowd. Okay. Also, you know, the, the one thing is, is that it was it was Moxley's worst reception since he started in AEW because he always gets a big reaction. Yes. And he did not. And for MJF, I would pretty much say the same thing. I think it was one of the worst receptions he's gotten. In AEW as well, and it was designed for him to come out and get a great reception. Yes. So, so a lot of it, a lot of it was on, like a lot of it was on the crowd. They, you know, and it's just like you have your nights. You know, I mean, I saw some of the wrestlers go talking about how you know Connecticut sucks, and it's, I, you know, I've seen good crowds in Connecticut, but this this, this crowd was not was, a good crowd. This was not a good crowd as far as no, no, it was a crowd. You know, it was like it wasn't a big crowd, and they didn't make a lot of noise throughout the show. You had to work your ass off to get anything out of them, and uh, and you had to do it in the ring. And for a promo, they they weren't that hot. So he and, gets in the ring, he beats up all these guys, and after he beats them up, he literally has to go, "Come on!" and get the crowd on their feet because they're just sitting there. Yeah. And so then he does a promo, and he talks about how he's going to go there. He's not the same kid that that uh, fought. Uh, Moxie for the title the first time. He's not going to need this ring. Right, uh, Willie, I think he called him, William Regal. Will, yeah. And he says he needs that AEW title. It means you're the best wrestler in the world. And then he dropped the line already. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he did not exist. And this Saturday night, he's going to be That's, the it, wasn't devil. That, wasn't, wasn't that Wasn't that a Kevin Sullivan line? 
I think it was around before Sullivan. I think we no, 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 no. I'm just saying Kevin Sullivan used the line. No, no, it's been around long before Kevin Sullivan. Yes, yes. I'm just saying in wrestling, Kevin Sullivan used to use the line. Well, then Moxie said this Saturday, and then he goes, Sunday. What day is this show? The show. The show. <laughs> Saturday. No idea what day the show is. The show Saturday. And, they well, usually it's, and he's not the you, only one you, either. Usually uh, it's Sunday, but I think Saturday I think Pac might have done a tweet talking about the pay per view on Sunday as well. Yeah, well, but, they, uh, usually, they usually they, look. The, the the idea is three of the four pay per views every year are on Sunday, and one is on Saturday, and this is the one of the year that's on Saturday. So because you don't want to go because you don't want to go against the NFL, but you're going against you know you're going against big college games pretty much most of the time too. So there's no this time of year is tough on pay per view. I mean, full gear, full gear, except for last year where it did very, very well. Full gear has usually been the toughest pay per view for them to draw. So that's another thing about this this buy rate. It is usually the toughest pay per view. And he says the training wheels come off on Saturday. They have a face off, and that's the end of the show. I mean, listen, I think the show's still going to do really well. But man, this crowd made this seem like I don't want to say a cold main event. But man, they were. Oh not... yeah, that's exactly what they made it seem like. I feel that's they, hard. I mean, I'm not that saying that it's going to be. You know, I mean, we'll see what happens. And I think in in uh, Newark, I expect the crowd to be pretty darn hot for MJF. But this crowd, this crowd did make it seem like a cold main event. Like if you just watched this, you wouldn't think this main event was was super hot. I mean, no. the, the the promo work was good. Um, but you know, it wouldn't. Yeah, it was. Uh, but look, look at how many times we've seen raw where the crowd's dead for every match and you know the same thing it doesn't seem like it's hot and then the pay-per-view does you know does re- does well so it's like that's you know the 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 crowd reaction and they weren't good you know mo- you know for mo- for the most part that that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen at the pay-per-view I would not I I right now I'm not worried about the crowd at the pay-per-view Oh I'm not I'm either not not at all because of, uh, because I think that here. I think that um there no I think that there will be matches that will be tough I think that the main event will, will do well I think the six man tag will do great um I think the acclaimed match will do good to great um and as far as crowds I think uh, some of the women matches are going to be up in the air. Jaden and Nyla, I don't know. Um, Soraya and Paige will probably have, I mean, Soraya and um, Britt will probably have something at the beginning, but it's up to them. You know what I mean? It's like if they have a, if they don't have a good match, I don't think that the crowd will necessarily be with them. Uh, if they have a good match, I think the crowd will be. And, um, you know, as far as some of the other stuff, um, you know, I, it just, uh, I think the four way will do well. I mean, God, you know, you got you got Sammy Guevara who's going to take big, big bumps. You got Brian Danielson, who's one of the greatest wrestlers has ever been. You got Claudio, who's freaking Claudio looked great tonight. Claudio's great. And Jericho's, you know, ring general and knows what to do and when to do it. So I'm not worried about. It. I think that four way will probably get a very, you know, I think the crowd will be very into the four way. But you never know. I mean, there, you may, you may be surprised. And there may be a sleeper match that 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 works really well. You never know with the pay per view crowd. But I'm not. Overall, top to bottom, um, not too worried about it. But um, you know, it is the Northeast, and sometimes, sometimes that's to your benefit. And then just tonight, it wasn't. Though. I totally forgot this story until just now, and it happened when I was a kid. And so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down. And all of a sudden I was like, I woke up later. This is the weird thing he says. Yeah. It is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.